Hey guys, what's going on? I'm John Malecki, and today I'm in the shop with Mike Montgomery making a router sled. Check it out. So this build starts out by breaking down some 2x4s. We're going to use the workbench that Mike and Ben made for their shop out here at the Maker Ranch for our reference surface because it's nice and flat and they didn't mind if we drilled into it. So what we're doing is pre-drilling the 2x4s and then countersinking them. We'll clamp them to the table as you can see here and we'll use some 3 plus inch deck screws in order to fasten them down. I'm using a triangle to keep everything nice and square and Mike's burying them home with an impact driver. For this version, I'm going to actually make the sled from metal. I'm using one and a half inch angle iron here. I'm chopping it up and then I'll put the sled together. So we have a flat side on the router. It does not make sense to go along this way so that you're kind of working it like a fence. So we don't need the router to be perfectly straight back and forth each time. So with that, we use the radius of the round just in case the router wants to move while it's in there. You got to remember all we're trying to do is make it flat. And it doesn't matter, we can come back and get the parts that we miss. Got it. So uh, by jamming this flat side against it, you wouldn't, you wouldn't allow the router to rotate. And if it does kick, then it's just going to go crazy. If it does kick, it's, it's going to kick all the whole jig. Okay, so this, yeah, it's got room to move if it needs to. Yes. Cool. I get a reference measurement from the actual plunge router we'll be using, and I cut the caps for the end of the sled to length. I then weld everything together with this Lincoln 140 model welder that you can get at your local Home Depot. If you're interested in this smaller welder, I'll have a link in the description. After the quick and dirty sled is built, I wipe everything down with some paste wax to make it slide nice and smooth. We're going to test it all out on this strap slab. We've gotten it leveled out with a few popsicle sticks, now we're hot gluing it down. Once we get everything secured to the table, the jig is ready to use. I'm using a 3 quarter inch patterning bit here that has carbide teeth on the top because we couldn't get our hands on a flattening bit. But if you are looking to get into flattening boards like this, I will leave links in the description for the types of bits that I recommend and that I use consistently. If you've seen this process on my channel before, you were probably checking out my river table and Mike also has an awesome project coming out that you're definitely going to want to check out where we use this jig to flatten a unbelievable river table that we're making at his shop in the Maker Ranch. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. This was a quick and dirty project that you can do in just about any shop. Just know that you don't have to use the steel parts. You can make it out of plywood or hardwood. To see a more detailed write-up, make sure you're smashing that link in the description. Go check out Mike's channel. We've got a sick epoxy coffee table coming out. And lastly, thank you so much for tuning in. Go punch your next project in the face, and I'll see you in the next video.